Okay, this is what happens when you push an elevator into the ground or into the tail hook of a, of a tie down. So you can see from the side that the elevator is bent downwards and from this side there's damages around the skin and this elevator now needs a hefty pricey repair. Okay. So there's on any aircraft since actually the load bearing surfaces uh, are only the the spars in between and all along the rivet lines. The skin themselves are quite flexible. If you try to push on the skin, eventually it will damage the, air, uh, the skin of the aircraft. Either uh, it stretches or it cracks. So whenever pushing your, your hand trying to push on the tail of the aircraft, you have to follow the rivet line. A couple of rivet lines that we can use, the first one being the spar of the elevator, but it's not recommended to always use the spar of elevator to take the full ground off the weight because the elevator is attached right here through the bolt and the fitting that go through the fuselage. So um, over time, it damages the fitting. Uh, so it's recommended to use the fuselage itself as the primary pushdown for the aircraft. And then uh, on the fuselage itself, the forward river line is hard to give forced to because it's so close to the center of gravity, trying to push down a tail from here is quite impractical. So uh, the way to do it is we have river lines here along this surface and the line here. So um, it's important to split forces, not rely on the individual hand. So we grab here and we place the hand along the, the elevator spar and we push it out. And note that don't push down so fast and so far that you bang the elevator into the ground. And this can happen if the elevator are in a full down position. And you, if you push it down too fast, it may hit the ground, at least the bottom part of it, especially with the trim tab uh, deflected downwards as well. So in extreme scenario, you can hit the ground if you go too fast. But there's a tail hook underneath that prevents, usually prevents it from actually making contact. Okay, so when pushing down and turning the aircraft, uh, I know everybody's at the end of the flight right now and everybody just want to go home and everybody's tired, but it's very important that we park properly to not damage anything. So especially the most common method uh, of damaging the elevator is actually pushing and turning at the same time so you run into something. So let's say I push right now as is and brings it back. So this, I can't hit anything on the ground with my elevator. But if I push down and try to push at the same time, there's a chance I run into something with my elevator. And this particularly um, with the tie down hooks we have in our parking lot uh, causes some uh, problems. We had a couple of elevator damaged that way like you saw earlier uh, in the hand. So, our rule is that when you're pushing down the aircraft, check around that there's nothing you can run into and don't push the aircraft backwards and rotate at the same time. If we rotate the aircraft, we only rotate. And then we go backwards. And in this case, I need to rotate some more. So I push down again, noting that I'm clear of the tires and tie down. And let it go, go back some more. I look around to check, there's nothing I can run into. Straighten my aircraft out so that both wheels can get onto the trucks. 
I see I'm a little bit off. So I rotate, go forward a little bit. It's easier to push from the strut. And then I reposition, it's like parallel parking the aircraft to make sure both of the wheels are going to be on the trucks. And then I bring it down. I bring it back all the way. And there we go. Okay, so after we have parked the aircraft into the position, there's one more thing we need to do actually securing the aircraft with tie down. Why we do this is because um, the aircraft wobbles a lot during high wind conditions. Uh, so to prevent this ha from happening, we have these tie downs and then we tighten down the straps by holding down the knuckle and then tighten down the strap. Make sure they are tight but you don't have to go overboard with the tightness. Uh, as long as it doesn't shake itself easily free, it is considered to be secured. So now we do the other side of the aircraft. Same thing, tighten up. Actually, it's better to avoid all the kinks in the lines. And we do this. Make sure it's tight and it's not gonna go anywhere. And then at the end of it, the pedal tube cover has to put, be put on. So this one already has the pedal tube cover on because it's already been parked, uh, but it's just something to watch out for because pedal tubes can easily get blocked if anything is inside of it. It's a very thin, orifice inside and um, there has been a lot of uh, rejected takeoffs because simply because the pedal tube is blocked and once that's blocked you don't have any airspeed showing when you are rolling down and it's very hard to maintenance personnel to check during inspections because you cannot taxi on the ground with 30 knot speed and without a, some kind of speed ASI wouldn't move so uh, is up to a pilot to ensure that the tube covers are properly on and nothing gets inside.